Good afternoon, Lace Jump, and I'm John. This is many a true nerd and welcome to Advance Wars Reboot Camp and bloody hell am I delighted to be able to say that Advance Wars is cocking back. One of my favourite games ever has returned, but okay. Okay, okay, okay. Let's get everyone on the same page here because uh, it's been a while since there's been an Advance Wars game. So, uh, Advance Wars 1 was a Game Boy Advance game that came out 20 odd years ago, though it wasn't actually the first Advance Wars game. The Wars franchise goes back a whole decade beyond that, though before Advance Wars 1, which was the first one to ever come to the West, it was a modestly successful war game that only ever came out in Japan. Advance Wars 1 was the first time it was released all around the world, and also the first one that was a really damn big hit, leading a couple of years later to Advance Wars 2, which is one of my favourite games of all time. Okay, a brilliant, wonderful strategy game that I will happily talk about in the same breath as Rome Total War, Mass Effect 1, Skies of Arcadia, almost certainly my favourite turn-based strategy game of all time. The future was bright for Advance Wars, and uh, things were looking good at first. We got Dual Strike over on the Nintendo DS. That was fine if maybe some of the new mechanics were a bit on the gimmicky side, uh, and then things started to go uh, a bit on the wrong side. Nintendo tried to spin this game off back onto home consoles under the name Battalion Wars. It wasn't really a huge success on GameCube or Wii. And then came Days of Ruin. The game that said, hey, you know the graphical style and tone and gameplay balance that makes this franchise work? How about we toss all of that straight in the cocking bin? And it was awful, just a game that aggressively misunderstood what made Advance Wars work, so much so that I consider it less of a game and more of an act of cultural vandalism. And it pretty much killed the franchise. Until today, because the good Advance Wars are back, so... Oh bloody hell, let's dive into this, because this is just magical. Okay, let's jump into one of the game's tutorials here, just to introduce the basics. So, as I say, Advance Wars is a turn-based war strategy game. That's me up in the top left, and my troops are all in orange, my enemy in blue over on the right. During my turn, I get to move every single one of my units once, and on top of that, if they happen to be in range of an appropriate enemy, I can open fire on them. The ones marked in red there. Once all my units have moved and or attacked, I enter my turn, the enemy gets their turn, and so on and so on. The game ends when either one side completely eliminates the other, or somebody captures the other side's headquarters. That's what this tutorial is introducing, because uh, look at the enemy headquarters down there in the bottom left, completely bloody unguarded. Especially when I've got a lovely transport helicopter, where I could just load up some infantry, move him over the water to here, camp to the headquarters, and then we would instantly win the game. Meanwhile, going up against this enemy directly would be absolutely suicidally stupid. Why? Because they've got medium tanks. Four of the bastards, in fact. On my side, I mean, well, yes, we've got a single tank, and that's a basic tank, so yes, if I were to attack the medium tanks with my tank, I'd barely even scratch the bloody paint. Going head-to-head -head against the blue team would be a terrible, terrible idea. So naturally, that's precisely what I'm about to do. And the key's going to be protecting and utilising my ranged units. So yeah, artillery here can shoot two to three squares away, and because it's attacking at range, enemies it's attacking can't fire back. We've also got, yes, yeah, some missiles here. Those are basically anti-air ranged. And would you believe it, part of the enemy's air force is currently in range right now. So just select them, open fire, bring my missiles to bear. And in just a flipping second as we launch the missiles at them. Oh my goodness, would you believe anti-air missiles work pretty well at taking out the air force. Though naturally, they can't attack ground at all. So once the second helicopter's down, those missiles are literally useless to me. They can't attack anything else on the field. But speaking of which, yeah, the enemy's got one more copter. So if I could just take that out, I'd have complete air superiority. Because I've got one battle copter right here at the back. So, okay, here's what we're going to do. I've got one anti-air unit right now, but I do not want to send it forward. Why? Because when the enemy gets their turn, they're going to slaughter it. This tank could shoot at it, medium tanks could shoot at it, and tanks will shred anti-air. So what I'm going to do instead is basically create a wall along here that this battle coptic part really get past. So you move right over here. Lovely. And my tank's going to do the same thing. Because, yes, it can't just go down here to attack this tank. Because, yeah, then this mech, which has got a bazooka, can just come back in and attack the tank next turn. Mechs are brilliant. They can't move very far, but they do hit as hard as a tank. So you've got to watch out for them. Instead, buddy, 
you just come back over here for just a second. Maybe up here. Yeah, that'll do nicely. Then my own mech comes down and my basic infantry are basically just going to be used as speed bumps. Creating a wall that the enemy can't get past for now. You meanwhile move over to here. Lovely. Move the APC out of the way. Don't need that for now. You move up to here. So you're now in range of yeah, anyone who comes up to my front line. And my own battlecopter can attack this tank from the sea. Because crucially, yes, the blue team doesn't have any anti yet. The only thing they've got that can really hurt this battlecopter that badly is their own copter. Which can't get down to, yeah, the spot over the sea. So you, buddy, you can get in here and start doing some damage. So that tank's going to be half dead already. Now that is a basic tank, not a medium tank. The medium tanks are a lot tougher. So, okay, I'm happy with this defensive formation right here. Because, as I say, I'm basically treating my infantry as uh, speed bumps at the moment. So... End my turn, Blue Moon gets to have a go. So here we go, tank moves forward, attacks my infantry, you move and attack my infantry too, you attack that infantry, and all of that is precisely what I wanted to see, because uh, what have I lost? A basic infantry, complete trash, don't worry about it, doesn't even matter. And even better, this unit is, yeah, standing on a city. So it just regained some health because that's a friendly city. Lovely. So this guy can now retreat, as can this guy, which has pulled them back to a safe location. But more importantly, my missiles are now in range of the second battlecopter. If you want, by the way, you can just uh, speed up the animations. They go past much faster. But I've now got complete and 100% aerial superiority. Next up, we've got my artillery that's now in range of these two tanks. And yes, they can finish off that tank or take on this one. Doing more damage to this guy because he's standing on the road. The road carries a literally zero defense, which is marvelous. This guy on the plane, he gets a tiny defensive bonus. But yeah, my troops in the cities, they get far bigger defensive bonuses. So, oh yeah, just open fire on this stupid bastard. Take him down. He's already taken a tiny bit of counter fire. Oh yeah, there we go. Straight down to two mag flipping nificence. And next up, yes, my own mech that's now in a good shape, which is beautiful. So this mech can now finish off at this guy. No problem whatsoever. Just speed that up. You go down. So, okay, tank number one goes down. Tank number two gonna be down pretty bloody soon as well. But this guy will die next turn if basically anything attacks him. So we're going to want him to pull back. I'm going to load him into my APC, which can be used to transport troops, bring you down over here, drop you there. So he's now just, uh, yeah, standing right on my headquarters. He'll heal up a bit over time. So he's going to be useful down the line too. Now I would like this tank to, yeah, straight up die at this point. So I'm going to deploy my own second mech forward. Uh, this mech is potentially going to be in trouble. Just because, yeah, to hold this line right here with the cities, uh, it does mean, in theory, two units could fire on this one mech, one from the road, one from the plane. That's a possibility, though. It is something we can do something about. That T-copter that was supposed to be using to, you know, ferry troops down to headquarters I'm not bothering with, uh, I can use it as a roadblock. Put it right here. That's an air unit, meaning tanks can fire on it, but they're forced to use their secondary weapons. As opposed to weapon one, the cannon, which is very, very powerful indeed. Uh, they're forced to use weapon number two. That's nowhere near as strong. And speaking of which, don't forget my own copter, which is pretty bloody good at doing some damage to the medium tanks. But yeah, look at that. Medium tank. 25% even though it's on the road. These guys are... They're vicious. This is why this is a tough fight. Because slowly, he's going to start chipping down my copters too. Right, end of my turn. And right, Olaf has taken enough damage. He's ready to use his CO power. Basically a catch-up mechanic. As you take damage in the fight, your CO meter fills up. It does fill up by you doing damage, but way faster for taking damage. Meaning whoever's losing gets to use a special power. For Olaf, he makes it snow. Because his troops are good in snow. Mine, not so much. And just look at that right there. Alright, he couldn't do much damage to my T-Copter. But... He's starting to do damage to my, uh, yeah, helicopter. That is not going to be around forever, unfortunately. But, for the time being, we've now got a lovely, lovely line of troops, though. Ooh. Okay, one bad thing. My artillery is now not really placed that well for me. So, okay. I'm going to say we need Mr. Missile to just uh, naff off out of the way to get my artillery into a better position so it can hit, yeah, way, way further. But for the time being, yeah, I'm going to say leave that copter there. This guy may well choose to come here to attack this mech, but 
Just keep on keeping on. Do a bit more. Oh, bloody hell. That's 15 damage. Yeah, using your CO power gives you a little bit of a defensive boost. That's 17. Okay, it'll slow him down a bit. These battle copters are not going to survive this fight. You may have noticed, yes, you do have uh, limited ammo. We've got two shots left from our main missiles, uh, then an infinite machine gun. I could bring him back home, top him up with the uh, APC that can supply units with ammunition, etc. But honestly, I feel like we're in pretty good shape for the minute. So, yeah, just keep everyone where they should be. Bring you there, put you in a city so you can start recharging too. We might need you guys as speed bumps down the line. So, yeah, just wait there. He's probably, as the weather clears, going to launch an attack on my helicopter from multiple angles. It's getting weaker. Yeah, he goes in, does more damage to this, does some damage there. Okay, you're starting to fall apart, unfortunately, but... I mean, you've done some good work, bless you. And uh, he's made one a really, really big stupid error right here. Which is, uh, his artillery is in range of mine. This was the bit that was worrying me. He could potentially pick me apart from a distance with artillery. If I'm trying to hold a choke point, he can just start shelling it. So, uh, he's brought his own artillery up. But, yeah. He's not going to be able to do much with it in the event I take it out first. So, my artillery fires on his. Uh, that just goes mostly down and... Uh, as its final act before it dies. Uh, okay, you ran out of missiles, didn't you? Yeah, you're out of missiles, so you've now got to use your machine gun. But, I mean, do what you can. At this point, that thing is functionally useless. It will probably fall back to a city to try and regrow itself. This T-Copter's going to go down pretty soon. You, buddy. We need you to fall back. You need to come off your city. You're pretty strong and powerful. So you buddy can come here. I could open fire on this guy, but it's going to do maybe, yeah, down to seven hit points. But he's going to take so much damage back, there's a good chance he could die next turn. Which would be a bit of a problem, actually. So, is it worth it? I'm going to do that, so that's probably a mistake. But screw it, maybe down to, you know what, six is good. Six is good, I'll take that. Meanwhile, my tank comes here because this T-Copter is going to go down. That's fine. And we knew that was going to happen sooner or later. And yeah, the missiles are just sitting there functionally doing nothing. So that's absolutely fine too. Okay, keep on keeping on. We are starting to wear them down. All right, three medium tanks are badly damaged. You are doing some damage there. You've taken out that. The mech might move forward. Obviously, B-Copter goes down. And we have lost one mech. But I think that's actually a pretty good result for me, all things considered. Because, uh, oh my goodness, having taken some damage, it's time for my CO power. Nell, who I'm playing as, her thing is lucky. So sometimes she just does a tiny bit more damage than you might expect. But her CO power is, yes, randomly striking up to plus 60%. Meaning her units can start absolutely annihilating the enemy. But it's completely up to chance, so screw it. Activate CO power. Absolutely lovely. And uh, if we're very, very lucky indeed, uh, we might be about to punch well above our weights. Of particular note, yeah. This artillery ought to do about 42% to this 7 hit point uh, medium tank. But come on now. Do your thing. Just straight up kill it. And uh, dead. So there we go. We got lucky on that occasion, which is beautiful. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my tank up here. 16% again, but with now's lucky star, might be enough to do significantly more. And okay, we got the luck again. Beautiful. Now's ability is great. Anti-air can absolutely shred infantry. So bring my anti-air cannons, given, yeah, we're out of uh, helicopters and whatnot. So that can just do some lovely work right over there. If he tries to bring in a more mechs, then yeah, those guys will fight back pretty effectively too. Though I could also send forward uh, my own infantry basically too. You know what? That's the right option. And yeah, make sure the artillery stays uh, filled up with uh, ammo. We need plenty of that. This guy's already nearly back up to full strength, which is uh, beautiful. So okay. This is looking pretty good right here. The enemy's got one more strong proper medium tank. Then it's just the infantry. Though, yeah, because I'm doing so much damage to Olaf, he's just getting blizzard constantly. So it's going to be snowing all the time. But given I'm trying to hold this position and not advancing, it doesn't really matter, to be honest, because blizzard just really slows you down when you're crossing terrain. But I'm just wanting to hold position anyway, so it barely even matters to me. So, okay. That one falls back. You move over here, do some damage. And yeah, I think we got a lucky retaliation there as well. But honestly, I think we've nearly got this at this point. Especially with the healing coming off my cities. 
These guys need to go down. Though at some point, we need to make sure, yes, he doesn't get to recharge all of his units. You, meanwhile, need to uh, fall back. And that's absolutely fine. Do I want you to fall back at this point? I feel like, yes, the anti-air ought to fall back a little bit. And the mech ought to take the place. Because the mech can fire back way more effectively against these here tanks. What I'm worried about is uh, this tank potentially being swarmed. So, uh, to stop that happening, uh, I'm sending my APC up front to basically, yeah, just help with the choke point right there. Because, yeah, what's perfect for me is just a traffic jam. I just want Olaf to be in a big, dumb traffic jam. So, uh, does good damage, uh, does decent damage right there. But at this point, his mechs can't get to my front line, which is beautiful. And now, uh, now the fight back begins. All right, take out this here tank, and I want to make sure it dies properly, and it can't just retreat. Retreating is uh, kind of bad for me in a way, so... Okay. I'm also going to bring back my own tank and send my mech forward, uh, so I've got something full strength on the front line. Beautiful. That goes down. APC can fall back for healing as well. Lovely. I'm going to, yeah, send this infantry forward. He's just going to stand there for no reason. Missiles are also just going to help protect the artillery because the artillery is the killer. That's the one that's actually getting the damage done. You can fall back. You're ready to start moving forward. Uh, okay. Life is good. We are almost through this at this point. The six hit point one is hopefully going to attack the Mac. It does not, but I think we should be, yeah, pretty much in good shape at this point. We've basically broken a hammer. Especially once, yeah, this tank goes down. If we can just kill you, then at that point... Oh, yeah, straight down to one. You pull back, send forward the tank to make sure we finish you off anyway. Lovely, and... Uh, okay, now there's just this tank. But this guy probably won't advance again till he's back up to uh, full condition. Meanwhile, at this point, my mechs can start actually clearing out the enemy infantry. Because, yes, indeed, basic infantry, though they won't do that well against mechs, will still do pretty competently. It's not a bad exchange for me. So, bare minimum, we can, yeah, get them down to, like, uh, half health or thereabouts, meaning he can't fire his proper bazooka at my tanks. And, uh, at this point, we're pretty much done. In fact, you know what? Screw it. I'm sending forward the anti-air to just start picking off you as well. Beautiful. He dies, and, uh, broadly... That's your loss. Olaf is a pretty much done. Meaning I get the special speech. What do you know? I routed the enemy. Well, I guess you did, but why I thought we were going after the enemy's headquarters? Well, it turns out I'm just amazing at this game, Andy, so basically screw you. Okay, let's jump into, yes, the Advance Wars 2 campaign, because this, to my mind, is the absolute creme de la creme of the entire franchise. And there are some amazing missions in this campaign. But let's jump to one of my absolute cocking favourites. Over in Green Earth, Sea Fortress. And it's highest level, by the way. The plot of Advance Wars 2 is uh, remarkably simple. Black Hole are the baddies. They're invading the four nations, are Orange Star, Blue Moon, Gold Comet, used to be Yellow Comet, but they renamed it in the reboot for some reason, and Green Earth. On this occasion, we're jumping into, yes, Green Earth CEO Eagle's point of view as he takes on Black Hole CEO Hawk. So, uh, a mysterious fortress has emerged in the sea, and we've assembled an air force to crush it, because would you believe, uh, from the name Eagle, that's what his thing is. Attention all aircraft, proceed towards that structure, and open fire. Yes, there's just uh, one small problem, Eagle, which is uh, you're taking on Hawk, who's a tactical genius, meaning he kind of saw you coming, actually. Sir, there are anti-aircraft units everywhere, should we really proceed? What? They must have known we were coming. You're in a bind, Eagle. If we retreat, we allow them to continue constructing their fortress here, Green Earth would suffer the consequences. But if we press our attack, we might win, but the casualties will be enormous. So basically I'm walking straight into a trap, into an area that has been specifically set up to deflect my forces. So uh, yeah, just remember how effective those missiles were that I had against the battle copters a minute ago. Uh, yeah, well, they've got missiles now. They've got uh, four of them as well. And also four anti-air cannons uh, as well. And also plenty of copters. Uh, and these things, mini cannons, these are like buildings. So they're on the ground uh, and they can fire only in the direction they're facing and do a bit of chip damage over time. We can destroy them with air to ground, but uh, yeah, they're a bit on the tough sides. The enemies brought plenty of uh, B-copters as well, together with uh, fighters. These are air-to-air -air superiority fighters, so excellent at dealing with the air, but cannot attack the ground at all. Now, fortunately for Hawk, yeah, I don't have any ground forces, so uh, these guys, we're going to have to really bloody watch them. 
And uh, just for fun, he's got a couple of cruisers. So sea to air anti-air cannons. Uh, very, very strong indeed. That's not to say I don't have a good force with me anyway, all right? I've got plenty of uh, bombers that can absolutely annihilate the missiles, uh, even anti-air cannons, if I can get the first hit in. And uh, they can destroy those mini cannons too. Got my own fighters as well, so yeah, I need to make sure my fighters are taking out his. Uh, and uh, we've got battlecopters, though uh, those guys do not hit anywhere near as hard uh, as the fighters uh, or the bombers. So step one, we're just advancing. We just need to make sure, yeah, we do not walk into range uh, of his fighters. That's going to be the key. So uh, as long as we don't go past, yeah, this line uh, right here above uh, these here reefs, we should be A-OK. -okay. So yeah, just uh, make sure we don't move our B-copters as far forward as we can do. Otherwise, uh, we're going to run into trouble. So I'm now safely out of range. Okay, my units are now in position, but time to see how aggressive Hawk's planning to be, because uh, I feel like having played a bit of this already, the AI is more cautious and intelligent than it used to be. So, uh, alright, here we go. He's probably planning to use his, yeah, B-copters to uh, try and screen the fighters. The cruisers are just piling forward because, uh, yeah, they are very no. Okay, he's happy to just put his fighters uh, straight forward. That's a good, early, easy pick-off for me, except, um... Uh, Kind of it isn't, actually. He's done something very smart in a way, which is uh, he's basically throwing away the first wave. And remember what I said previously. When you're taking damage, you charge up your CO power faster than when you're doing damage. Part of this mission is a race to see who can actually get their CO power up first. Because my ultimate CO power is Lightning Strike. I get two turns in a row, and on the second turn, my troops are even stronger. Basically, devastatingly powerful. Hawk's CO power, however, is just he gets to do a flat one or two hit points to every unit on the field. As he starts chipping down my units, they're going to slow down and be less effective at taking out his units. Ideally, I want to get my power before he gets his. So potentially, actually, tossing away a couple of B-copters at the start of the fight, deliberately feeding them to his fighters, uh, might have been a good thing to do, arguably. But for the time being, okay, just make sure we are... Okay, we're well out of range of uh, the cannons. Uh, the cruisers are nowhere near as yet. These here fighters are miles behind, too. Okay. Send my own fighters in to start, yeah, knackering his fighters. But bear in mind, I'm going to take a bit of counterfire back because I can't one-shot them. Though fortunately, yeah, Eagle is uh, very good in the air. So if we're lucky, it's just going to be a 9-4. to four. There's going to be a bit of dice rolling going on here. So we may or may not be able to uh, get that on both occasions. 9-4 uh, to four again. Okay, that's absolutely fine. And I would rather finish these guys off. Because, yeah, uh, Copters can't attack uh, fighters uh, because they're like too high up or something. So I've got to be using my fighters to finish off these here fighters. So they've got to go down. Just speed that up. Marvelous. Finish you off too. And then my own B-copters will be moving in to wipe out his B-copters. Guys, start just taking them out. Honestly, my B-copters are so good. They can take out his B-copters nice and easily. Let's just get over to here. That's all absolutely fine. We're going to take a little bit of damage back, but... Just want to keep an eye on his power. Ideally, I want him to not hit max power. That would be absolutely perfect. So I might choose to leave one helicopter alive so I can get my power before he can get his. That would just be ideal. So just move in here. Take you out to just keep a really close eye on his power here. Okay. We can definitely take out one more, but we probably can't actually finish them off anyway. So just uh, you down to... That's nice. You down to two. Again, just keep an eye open. I think we can, yeah, hit this one. And we can't actually finish them off anyway. So take you out. Down to two. And we should be... Okay, good. He is not ready to use his power. Bring forward my copters. Uh, bring the bombers up. They can advance pretty confidently at the moment. In fact, just make an absolute double sure. Yeah, you can't make it past there. You can't shoot past there. My bombers are basically ready to move into a pretty aggressive position. Next turn, we're going to start bombing the mini cannons. And next turn, I would also ideally like to, yes, have my own lightning strike ready to go. Honestly, I'm increasingly thinking, yeah, I should have actually let more B-copters just be fed to our uh, hawk. That might have been a good idea. So his B-copters are starting to be a little bit more cautious here. Cruisers. Those are... Ooh, those are dangerous. Those are very dangerous. But 
Once we've taken out the fighters, my fighters at that point become way less important. So, okay, if I start fighting it here, he is going to get his power off next turn. That's going to cripple my bombers. Okay, this is where life gets tricky because, yeah, at this point, I pretty much have to take out these fighters. If I don't, they're going to take out my bombers and my bombers take out the mini cannons and the mini cannons, that's how we win the game. Because, yeah, on this occasion, that's the win condition. Killing all his units doesn't do anything. It's just the eight mini cannons. They're ground units, so, yeah, at one point my fighters are going to become useless. Because my fighters can't attack grounds. Which is convenient, because if I try and take out these fighters, then, yeah, my fighters are about to start taking some damage. So, okay. Send them forward. Yeah, the strongest ones can go up front and be safe up from the mini cannons, but... These guys have to go down at this point. So, okay. There's no way we can stop this at this point. We are not ready to use Lightning Strike and Hawk is going to use Black Storm. So, fine. He's going to get that off before we can stop him. Then just send my lovely rear lads right here to finish off these copters too. Just to get them out of the way. Beautiful. So, okay. That's this area clear. Hawk is now going to use Black Storm next turn. So everything is going to be down to less hit points, which is a problem because, yeah, my bombers, when they are full strength, they can one-shot a mini cannon. When they're down to eight hit points, no, they can't because you lose strength as you lose hit points. Right, deploy my fighters into the center because what I think we might be able to do is uh, create a barrier that my bombers can hide behind because, uh, yeah, the mini cannons can't get past here. You are moving up to about here. So yeah, my bomber's being in a nice safe position around here. Ready to start moving in next turn. Once we start taking some damage from this, that, the other. And yeah, Cruiser's going to come in and finish off on one of these two fighters. You're going to weaken one of the fighters. If we're lucky, he'll go for the same one that the mini cannon's going to go for. And same deal over here as well. Get you into the center. Lovely. So okay. Fighters are now off the field. Is that every fighter that Hawk's got? Because, yeah, he's got a couple of B-copters. Uh, fine. So my fighters are basically useless at this point. Aside from potentially creating barricades uh, to protect more important units. The trick being, yes, I could start bombing the mini cannons right now. But if I do, then... Okay, one, this mini cannon's going to get a shot in. And then two, the cruiser's going to finish it off. So I'd be sacrificing... Uh, Two bombers for two mini cannons, which I do not feel like is a good trade. But yeah, at this point, anti-air fire is starting to overlap and things are going to get complicated fast. Like, you can't do this perfectly. There are going to be casualties. The game's not kidding when it says, hey, I'm walking into a slaughter. Still, these spots at the front should be relatively safe just because, yeah, the cruiser will almost certainly go for the higher value fight arm. So you guys can start moving in this direction, especially the damaged ones, because why not? And that's going to create a nice spot for, yeah, my bombers. My bombers are going to hide back over here. I am not charging in. I'd rather have six damaged bombers next turn than four with too many cannons down. That's not a good trade for me. All right, bombers nice and snug around the back. Give me your flipping worst, Hawk, because this is where I, uh, yeah, the tables turn a bit. Hawk's going to use his power. He can just, you know, basically declare, hey, your units are damaged now because screw you. As I expected, mini cannons went for the highest value targets. And as I suspected, cruisers did the same thing. Beautiful. The other cruiser is hanging back, though, but... Okay, honestly, that's... He didn't use his power. Well, that's fascinating. Okay, he made the choice not to... Oh. Did he choose to do that? Because his power doesn't just damage my units. It heals his. Maybe he didn't use it because he didn't have any units to heal. And uh, if so, you have just made a catastrophically dumb decision, my friend. Right, well, you're about to start dying because now I get two turns in a row. So, okay. Now I can just advance pretty much freely, because after this unit's done, it gets to go again. So okay, time to start bombing the hell out of your stupid defences. Number one, number two, I'm aware my bombers are actually, uh, yes, right here. I don't actually care. And these cruisers, yeah, they are down on the sea. They've got very, very powerful anti-air little kind of batteries on them. Probably the best thing to do is, yeah, deploy the copters. 
Because, okay, how good is a bomber at taking out these guys? I mean, good, but I'd rather my bombers were charging forward uh, and taking out mini cannons. Except, hang on, one trick I remember from the original, mini cannons count as building. So, uh, as long as this thing is up, these anti-air cannot make it to the rest of the island. They are trapped behind their own mini cannons. So, uh, there is an argument to be made for saying, leave those mini cannons for last. Especially as, yeah, they're facing a particular direction. They can't turn to face me. So once I get past them, they're functionally useless. Fighters, you guys just die forward. I want those B-copters taken out because otherwise they might take out my B-copters. Okay, I swear in the original, Hawk would pretty much always, 100% of the time, get his power off before yours. But okay, the way he calculates that has definitely changed a tiny bit. Marvellous. The problem we have here is, yes, I could attack the anti-air with my bombers, but anti-air are, you know, would you believe, uh, good against air, defensively as well as offensively. So, uh, the splashback would hurt my bombers, that is not good for me. So, okay. That would be, all blimey. Do I really want to take out these? I feel like I don't. Now I'm wishing I was just a tiny bit further forward, but what can you do, eh? Okay. Advance forward, uh, take out none of these guys. Instead, okay. Copters, your job is to take out this here cruiser. Gonna take a bit of damage back, but that's all absolutely fine. Uh, send forward the ones at the rear. So, okay, second attack should get you down, a uh, buddy. And then we'll just move you forward uh, to do the same in just a second. Uh, honestly, everyone forward. And you know what? What I am going to do is I'm going to weaken them a bit. Because he is going to use his power sooner or later. And when he does, uh, yeah, my bombers won't be able to one-shot the mini cannons anymore. So using my copters to just slightly weaken them a bit. So my weakened bombers will be able to actually finish them off in one shot still. That's not bad. And also bear in mind I can merge units if I want to. To restore them up to uh, full health. Just whether it's a good idea or not, not 100% sure on that. So... Uh, Move you forward. I do not want to attack. No, I do not want to attack just yet. There's also an argument, by the way, for, um, yeah, taking all your units and shoving them one side or the other. And then just ignoring the guys on the other side and coming up on them from behind. Because then you get to basically ignore half the uh, mini cannons. But for the time being, it's cocking time. Activate my superpower. All units ready for attack. And we get some fancy new animations too. Lovely. Eagle activating a lightning strike right there. Marvellous. So every unit gets to come back online. And now they're even cocking stronger. Okay, so now if I was to attack... Oh, blimey. Okay. My bomber could at that point take out the cruiser, taking no fire back. But I'd say I know what we need to do first. Okay, step one, obviously, yeah. The B-copters go down. That way, my B-copters stay online away more effectively. So, fighters go forward. And honestly, my fighters at this point are functionally useless. There is nothing in the air left to attack. So, they can, you know, do some good blocking or whatnot. But, whether we actually need them to, not sure. Okay. Copters and also bombers. Probably best we get the missiles down. Now, they are well defended. So, this might be a kill. It might not. Just drop the bombs on them if we get lucky. Okay, that was a lucky kill. So, you get over to here. Let's see if we can do the same thing. I've got plenty more little bits and pieces floating around if need be. They go down too. Missiles can one-shot pretty much anything I've got in the air. So, this is sensible. But at this point, we just accept, hey, I'm going to be taking some damage. That's just completely unavoidable. Right, send you forward to... Buddy, get over to here. Okay. Good luck all round. Uh, right there. Now, the question is, uh, do I really want to let the anti-air free? And probably no, I don't. But that's actually interesting. Okay, you're going to take out one of these two guys. Or at least do like uh, three hit points to him. Okay, this is... Also, if I just keep leaving no units with damage, you're going to keep just not using your power. Because that would be cooking hilarious. I mean, in addition, my bombers can actually do 86% damage to these anti-air. That would take a little bit of damage back. And then we could take out the front mini cannons. No trouble. But then again, I just feel like leaving them for last. That's going to be the most sensible option. So you just get over here. Do a little bit of uh, light damage to those guys. So yeah, those guys can now be finished off even by 
damaged bombers. With the missiles down and only two anti-air at the back, I feel like actually, yeah, finishing off these anti-airs so we can take out these two guys uh, without having to stress about it too much. I think I would be up for that, you know. The question is, do I have enough firepower to wipe out these guys? Hang on. How much do we need to... Oh, John, do not forget the cruiser. There's still a cruiser up there. That cruiser needs to die. That cruiser definitely needs to cocking die. To just take you down. Okay, that's all absolutely fine. Take you out too. Okay, cruisers are now dead too. B-copter's in pretty good shape here. I could take out both of these anti-airs with one bombing run and one B-copter to finish them off. Then we just try and swarm, yeah, at least one mini cannon. Problem's gonna be, I will almost certainly take damage back. So if I use my bombers to take out the mini cannons, then I don't have enough bombers left over to take out the anti air. But if I do just take out, you know what, actually, hang on, there's. Okay, there's another four at the back here. Screw it. Let's give it a go. Let's take out you and you. And if we're lucky, yeah, maybe down to. One is good. That means my bomber has not taken a hit. Go again, BF. It's down to two, not one. That's going to be more of a problem. So, that was a one. Okay, my bombers are still at full strength. So, in which case, deploy my copters in. They can now finish these guys off with no splashback. Which lets the rest of my copters move in and start just doing the work here. And once again, Hawk has no units that are damaged. So... I mean, I would absolutely love him to just refuse to use his power because he's gained some form of quirk in his code uh, that he doesn't use it unless he can heal his own troops with it. So, I mean, I guess we're flipping C, to be honest. That would be hilarious if so. So, okay. That's the end of my power right there. Now we're going to take some flipping damage uh, from the cannons, but not the anti-air. They can't get to me. Honestly, this is going spectacularly well. There is, yeah, a bit of fire on the bombers. Uh, that's fine, but honestly, these bombers are, are still going to be able to do the job. Another bomber takes some damage. Uh, okay, down to four. And, uh, yep, that's just the fighter, and that's going to be fighters as well at the back. Honestly, I'm okay with that. Okay, he's finally bothering to use his power. You know, the thing that would have made that much harder for me. Well done, a Hawk. Good job. And, oh, Hawk's such a badass. So he's just going to, you know... Put a big swishy thing over the field. Uh, the knackers all my troops and makes his much better. So, okay. Put the cannons and black sword together. My army's looking a lot more dicey. It must be said. Now, I'm not going to be able to get another lightning strike off. Not a chance. So, okay. At this point, I'd say send you forward. Yeah, these two bombers together can take out this one at the rear. And the anti ag can't get to him. Can I do the same thing over on this side? Yes, I can. I did not plan this, but it's going to work beautifully well, as it turns out. So take you out too. Two rear cannons are taken out. The front cannons are basically in a lot of trouble. So take you out right over there. Take you out. Just let my copters do the work. Okay, lovely. My copters are doing spectacularly well. Very nice indeed. And honestly... Less ridiculous, dumb casualties than I was expecting. I think we've actually done pretty bloody well there. Though half off the back of Hawk making a questionable decision not to fire off his power as early as he could. So here we go at number one and number two. Cannon at number seven. And then finally you and you. And boom, pretty much everybody comes home. And screw you, Hawk, basically. Commander, the mini cannons, uh, they've been destroyed. Uh, that's it then. Uh, we shall withdraw. Hawk is very unflappable, by the way. Nothing really perturbs him. Oh, and I will flipping take perfect score on speed, power, and technique for an S rank. Beautiful. Seriously, though, the Advance Wars 2 campaign has just got classic missions coming out of its ears. So uh, let's jump over to uh, Gold Comet, as they are these days, uh, for a mirror dart play. Oh, now this one's brilliant. Whereas my foe, what is this? There is no enemy to be found. Sonia, we've arrived at the coordinates you specified. Uh, what is the meaning of this? Of and you're right, there's no one in sight. This is an important piece of the puzzle, though. I just know the enemy must be targeting this area. Sonia, if they're really here, show us where they're hiding. Well, where there is no enemy, there can be no fight. In such a case, we must move forward to the next battlefield. I suppose you're right, Sensei. 
and yet something seems strange. Not a soul in sight, guess no one in Gold Comet has a brain after all. I guess I'll just sneak right up and catch their headquarters when nobody's looking. Took your time getting here, didn't you? And ah, don't surprise me like that. Hey, I know you, Sonya, the commander's daughter. You're not supposed to be here. No one is. Your family's army is supposed to be long gone. And sorry to disappoint, that intel was concocted by yours truly. As you can see, it was fake. It wasn't exactly easy to get my father and Sensei to agree to this plan, but I suppose it worked. And here I was worried you might not fall for it. Are you saying that you trapped me? Because yes indeed, Lash and Sonya are both characterised as geniuses and this is the moment where they meet in Advance Wars 2. And Sonya is a very smug about this. So surrender, there are rockets on both sides of you and artillery waits ahead. Try and get to our headquarters, you'll be wiped out. Hmm. And well I wonder actually, huh? I mean, not like you're some great combat specialist or anything, right? Mm -hmm. You really think you can beat me? And Sonya's a little bit annoyed about that. I have a pretty big army here. If I keep marching, I think I'll take your headquarters and win. Don't you agree? Impossible. My calculations are not wrong. Your army will be destroyed before you even set foot near our headquarters. I'm pretty sure I can make it. Wanna bet on it? If you really want to try, who's going to stop you? Oh, that's right. I am. In fact, I won't let even a single unit of yours so much as touch our headquarters. Let's determine which of us has the better grasp on reality. Is that a challenge? I love games and this will be a blast. So what we've got on this significantly larger map is basically, yes, what I assume we're supposed to imagine is like a long valley. Because this central corridor leading up from the south of the map up towards my headquarters at the north is completely surrounded by mountains. And for the vast majority of troops, mountains are impassable. Meaning Lash's army down here. Let's just see if we can, yeah, get eyes on uh, some of them. There we go. That's just the tiniest taste of what's hidden away in the fog. They are going to march straight up this long valley, straight towards the headquarters. If a single unit touches my headquarters, i.e. sitting on the same space as it, then I lose this fight. Meaning I get to have fun of basically shelling them as we go. But you may notice that yes, there's fog of war on this occasion. Not on every map, but just sometimes uh, it shows up. Sonya, however, is a fog of war expert. Specifically, yes, every single one of her units sees one further than anyone else would do under the circumstances. Which is great, but Lash is unquestionably better when it comes to a straight up fight. And she has got a cocking huge army hidden away in the fog. So, okay. Send my troops forward, get them into the forest, given as you can see, forests automatically hide anyone inside them. So my troops at the side have all been moved forward, just ready to start firing in on anyone we can see. And yeah, part of the trick is, uh, bear in mind one, my mechs can cross mountains, uh, so they can just go in to scout out anything hiding in the forest. And two, a mech standing on a mountain has got massively increased visual range, which is why we can seal these units down over here. And two, we've got to keep the headquarters safe. So uh, these rockets right here, they can definitely move into, yeah, a forest to be hidden away somewhere. That's all absolutely fine. We want to keep at least one tank on the headquarters uh, at all times. Everything else, just put in a nice defensive position in the cities uh, and use them as basically, yeah, little speed bumps to slow lash down. But that's all we can do. And our army is... Uh, absolutely cocking tiny next to hers. All right, the amount of troops we've got, absolutely nothing. So just to end my turn and just, yeah, let uh, Lash move her forward nice and fast and uh, we'll see what we mean. Just uh, speed things up a bit here. There come some recon units. There come tanks. There come more tanks. And yeah, all sorts of bits and pieces. Uh, there's a medium tanks as well, just uh, piling in. There's infantry. So yeah, just... Uh, Keep that in mind too. She's got some infantry of her own. So step one, we need that infantry to die. Because otherwise it could cross the mountains and get to my artillery and my rockets. So those are my first priority. So here we go. Just open fire with my lovely gold comet artillery. Take out the mechs because yeah. I mean, you've seen in that first fight. Mechs can absolutely destroy artillery and rockets even more so. But with a bit of rocket fire coming in, there goes down mech number one. Beautiful. Just move my recon unit forward and uh, 
Okay, say hi to the Neo Tank, by the way. In this game, I know they look dumb as anything, but they're actually the greatest weapon on the battlefield. They move fast, they hit harder, they are ridiculously strong. Alright, and bear in mind, uh, she's got Neo Tanks down here. I'm guarding my headquarters with basic tanks. So, um, yes, one on one, I'm going to be annihilated. We have got to start weakening these guys before they get anywhere near me. Still, for the time being, yeah, we've got one shot at the other mech on the right, which is good, but those guys are up on mountains, so, yeah, we're not doing much in the way of damage. As Lash says, uh, yeah, Sonya is no specialist when it comes to actual combat. Very often, she can fall short a bit when it comes to the amount of damage she's doing. But as long as we're weakening her units, then, yeah, if they come at me, I can just sort of uh, finish them off a bit. Including, yeah, potentially exposing the odd mech just to bait her better units into the firing line could potentially be a good idea. As for this artillery, priority is, yeah, hit the units that are towards the front, they're going to get to the headquarters first, and just weaken everything. Medium tanks and neo tanks in particular. As long as everything's a bit on the weak side, then, yeah, it's not going to be able to punch through when it gets to the top of the valley. Oh, and speaking of which, I would really like that neo tank to die. This neo tank can get into this here forest, so if I just expose this mech right here, that neo tank will almost certainly take the bait. Then I can shell it from so many different angles, it's going to be great. Just make sure we don't do that with, you know, too many mechs, because eventually we're going to run out of visibility. The whole point of rockets is, that even with a boost of Sonya, rockets can't see very far. We need the recon units and the mechs to provide the visibility. So, okay, Lash, would you by any chance like to, yes, uh, you know, show us how much you've got hidden away in the fog? Because uh, we've not seen all of it yet, like, not even bloody close. Here come uh, the tanks. They are nice and fast, though not the strongest. My tank should be able to handle that. And uh, come on, Neo Tank, I know you want to take the flipping bait. But bare minimum, uh, yeah, they're moving forward. There's another Neo Tank at the rear. Medium tanks are everywhere. Okay, some units taking the path on at the right. That's good. Uh, and there comes the attack. That's a power of Neo Tanks. Even though my mech was standing on a mountain, bloody hell, eight hit points immediately. And yeah, just uh, just a lot of stuff going on down over there. Mech's moving in on the left as well. Need to take them out. And on top of that, she's got artillery. Her artillery needs to go down because once again, it can fire at my troops. So uh, step one, yeah, just take out these here mechs. I want them flipping dead. And Sonya just not getting the damage we need her to get, unfortunately. Gonna send my own, uh, yeah, mechs backwards just to get a little bit more damage. Okay, that's gonna drive them back at the bare minimum. Small problem, though. She's not just got artillery. She's also got rockets at the rear, which is hilarious. This artillery can literally only hit those medium tanks. May as well get them down a bit. Now, Antiair I'm not so worried about. Antiair can't really do anything to my tanks at the front. I would rather prioritize, yeah, taking out the tanks. Because they can damage my tanks. And yeah, it's not going to be able to do that. So, yeah. Just a fire on everything. at Medium tanks. Get them down to, again, six, not five. Sonya, you are letting me down here. Do I want to potentially, yeah, try and bait someone forward? Like, say, this Antia. Honestly, I feel like that's barely even worth it. Just keep you right here where you're nice and safe. I could, however, send you forwards to assassinate this here artillery. I mean, I've got other mechs dotted about on this side of the world, and uh, it would probably distract her, like pull her back a bit. Hang on, check the rocket range. Not in range. Do it. I'm just going to charge forward. I'm going to fire my mechs at the artillery. That's going to damage them. And if we're lucky, some units will now jump on this mech. Which will slow them down. Also send the APC forward. Uh, we do need to, yeah, keep these things topped up. If they run out of ammo, uh, that's going to be a disaster. You're not in range of anything just yet. That's absolutely fine. Now, okay. The Neo Tank. This is what I was hoping to see. So let's get you down to seven odd. No, only eight because Sonya's cocking useless and never gets the amount of damage you actually wanted to get. Keep firing. Eventually, we'll take them down. This Neo Tank is so powerful, it's got to be taken out as a priority so honestly just to finish it off i want it dead it's too dangerous to be left alive okay it goes down i've got my starting co power which would just give me more visibility and also into forest i think we're fine in that regard for now so okay don't worry about one well, actually you know what that is 
that would be a good chance to finish you off, potentially. No. For the time being, take out the tanks and whatnot on the front line. Just weaken them all. One shot on everybody, if you'd be so kind. Prioritizing, yeah, targets on the road who have a literally no cover. That's down to three. That's not bad. Okay, we're starting to do some damage, but um, as we've discussed previously, that means Lash is going to get her CO power, like, pretty soon. You can uh, fall back to safety, by the way. This rocket is just in range of you, so glad we actually didn't fire on you previously, because otherwise that would have been a bit of a waste. I'll take this as a starting point. We've done, yeah, some damage to her indirect. We've done some damage to her infantry, and plenty more units are walking into big kill zones going forward. End my turn there. And probably Lash is going to be ready for... Her superpower! Right, say hello to the ultimate weapon of Lash. And it really bloody suits her on this particular uh, mission, as it turns out. Prime tactics indeed. So, yes, basically, all of her units now gain loads of bonus defense. Any defense she's standing on, it's doubled. So her units on cities and mountains, uh, you just can't cock and touch them this turn. And she's moving forward. If we're lucky, nothing's going to come over the mountain. That is, oh, blimey, she had rockets at the back. Oh, yeah, she had rockets at the back. That's, that's bad. Uh, and, oh, blimey, yeah, mountains. Uh, it's not just defensive, it's also attack too. So, yes, she gains uh, more and more attack for all the defensive terrain she's standing on. As I say, doubled uh, this turn. So, okay. This is interesting. In particular, that rocket just exposed itself. So, okay, we just took a bit of a tap there. Basic infantry just walked in, and if we try and attack it now, 2% damage. Brilliant. Even the artillery is doing nothing. So don't worry about that. That's fine. We'll deal with that later. Prioritize the, yeah, rocket. It's standing on a plane, so it's going to have two stars, not one, but even then... We can still do some good work, and this rocket needs to go down. That is a really high priority target, because otherwise uh, it can hit me. So just take out her rockets. I think she's got another one somewhere. And I'm ready for my own superpower, if I wanted to. Sonya's superpower is really weird, by the way. Counterbreak. So, uh, yeah, we gain a bonus defense, bonus vision. We can see basically everything, and uh, my counterattacks are super good. Broadly, if these tanks attempt to attack even my basic tanks, they're going to take a fair bit of damage in return. So, uh, screw it. She's starting to approach my front line and also, you know, my headquarters, which are very nearby. So, uh, I'm activating it now. Love the animations, by the way. The cool new little animations are super cute. So, there we go. Here comes Counterbreak. She's just going to analyze the field uh, very nicely. I'm going to be able to see... Uh, Everything, even stuff she's got hidden away. And there is rocket number two. I see it down bottom. So luckily, yeah, it's not in range of me. I'm not in range of it either. Her army's kind of moved past. So this artillery needs to start moving up at some point. I am happy to, yeah, move uh, my own units forward. Basically, I'm deliberately exposing this mech. So ideally, she'll hang around at the back trying to deal with it. And this turn, she won't be able to. Alright, this mech, standing on a mountain with counterbreak active, functionally unkillable. Bring the artillery up and then open fire on, ignore the recon, we don't care about that. Anything on a plane is fine. This turn, because of Lash's bonus, don't even bother going for, say, you know, anything in a forest. That is just too well defended. You're towards the front, I want you dead or nearby to it. And yeah, just start weakening everything, step by step on the plane... And then we've got more rockets coming in right here. We could finish you off. Yeah, that's a medium tank. Those are dangerous even on three hit points. So that was a good start on this side. You, we've got a good shot at. Oh, that's nice. Yep, destroy the anti-air. And then more and more and more coming in. But hang on, are you in? Yeah, you're in forest. So that's actually going to be four stars. Don't even worry about that. Then again, you know what? 40% isn't even that bad. So even with four stars yet, we can still do some good work. I just want to soften up everything. Softening up the troops, that's the key right here. So none of them can break through my tanks on the front line. And we've got more here and okay, there's still a lot of medium tanks. You are on a plane. Anybody on the road by any chance? There's an anti-air, but that is a really low priority target. Yeah, just a fire on you. Probably down to seven. Yeah, seven. 
and artillery would be bloody hell. There's a lot of stuff here. And one more Neo tank at the back. We haven't even touched yet. This is our... Oh, this mission's great fun. You just gotta keep your eye on so many things, like, you know, making sure your headquarters is properly protected. Do you have uh, visibility? Do you have uh, enough ammunition? Are you taking out her indirects and also her infantry before they come over and mess up your day? Do you want to expose some of your units so they have to hang back to deal with them, slowing the advance? It's just, ah, oh, it's a beautifully designed mission. And speaking of which, I'm going to expose some more stuff right here. So just get up onto this here mountain. Expose you. Don't quite finish you off, but that might well pull a bit of attention over in this direction. Which would be good because, yeah, I'm going to put you here. So anything in this forest will get fired upon by that artillery. Meanwhile, yeah, you're still hidden, which is crucial. Because at some point, yeah, you're going to become aware of these rockets. You're going to come hunt them down. Especially as... Ooh, you're a bit exposed, aren't you? I'm going to put you here to keep these troops away from these rockets. So we're just exposing a handful of units here. It's going to be fine. And uh, you can go here to protect this artillery and also maybe swing around and hit you next turn. Is that everything? I think it is. And the turn there. Lovely. So okay. Lash now loses her superpower benefit. We're losing cities. That doesn't really matter. Some units are falling back. You come in and look at that. Counter break in action right there. She cannot do much to me. She's taking a lot of damage in return. This is beautiful. And now there's a bigger chunk of moving up the middle. And as I was hoping for, medium tanks are being exposed over here. We're losing infantry at the back. There's one more rocket there, but I don't think that's in range of anything, and I lose my counter break and my bonus visibility. So, okay. What have we got left? Well, one, you can come over here, just to start finishing off you. That's infantry, not mech, so it does not have the bazookas. Move the artillery up into a better position. There is, yeah, more infantry coming in here. You just can't really do anything, and, uh, yeah. We've done some good work with these guys right here. You can take out you... Right now, they're not even approaching the headquarters. They're being distracted by units I'm exposing everywhere, which is really bloody useful. You are, okay, you are actually in range of that artillery. That artillery needs to get out of here. This is a dead end, and probably nothing really is going to be coming back this way. Then again, if I leave this unit right here, units will be coming back here to take that out. So I'm just going to put you here. You, meanwhile, kind of pull back to safety. And yeah, I know I now can't see that unit, but that's fine. He's really badly damaged. Uh, I'd rather be firing on the medium tanks that are still in a very good shape. So uh, you're taking damage right there. But yeah, bear in mind, uh, taking on a higher value target, that boosts Lash's CO meter faster. Ideally, I'd like to, yeah, do a lot more damage before she gets Prime Tactics off again. And she's already nearly at Train Tactics. That one's nowhere near as bad. So a little bit of defense, but not as much. Now, over on the left, this is where the real killing begins. So, you, buddy. Let's take out... Oh, yeah, that's... Pretty sure I just picked the wrong target there. I was not meaning to go for you. Sorry, my mistake. That was a bad pick. Okay, you're a good pick. Medium tank down to a half health. Because uh, full strength units, in terms of medium and neo, they can just walk up to my headquarters, uh, knock the tanks off, and win. However, yeah, if I start damaging them, uh, not so much. Prioritize the medium and the neo. So get you down to two. You might well choose to retreat at this point. Do I have a shot at the neo? No, but I can hit a medium on a road. That's good. That should be like four or five. And that means she probably won't pull it back to repair. She'll just keep pushing forward with a damaged tank. What I'm concerned about is there we go. I can finally get a hit on the rear neo. The neo was worrying me a bit. So that's now being a hit. And you, buddy. What else have we got? Probably best, yeah, we take out that there artillery. Otherwise, that will be able to hit my rockets. Next turn, that needs to go down. You are running low on ammunition. Supply you with the APC. You've only got one bazooka shot left. You meanwhile have two. I could merge them to merge the ammo as well. Is that a good idea? How many recon units do I have? Oh, I'm lacking in, uh, yeah, visibility around here. Then again, actually... You've got the tanks. Tanks have got good visibility. Screw it. I'm going to do it. 
So they're probably going to try and attack again. But yeah, uh, Sonya is good at counterattacks. Not so good at normal attacks, but counterattacks are fine. Especially as uh, we can just actually fire with our regular tank right here. So they can actually start doing something, which is great. As for you, I mean, we could bring this guy down just to start basically drawing some attention. It's going to be slaughtered though. And I don't want to draw enemies into the center of the valley. Because uh, center of the valley is out of range of everything. I want them nearby to my various rockets and whatnot. So, I think we leave that there, actually. I'm pretty happy with that situation. Move this APC up, ready to supply other units. Okay, are we ready for... Oh, we are just shy of Prime Tactics. That is perfect. That means she will not activate that, which is good. Because I'm pretty sure unless it's fully charged at the start of her turn, she won't use it. So, okay. She's sending units back to recharge. And I would say, oh yeah, that is starting to screw her over a bit right there. She's slowing down. And her medium tank's now into position. You see, this is why we need the medium tanks to die. Because the medium tanks are destroying my tanks. This is starting to get... Oh, actually, you know what? That's... That's looking dicey all of a sudden. There are too many medium tanks nearby to me. But I'm almost ready for counter break. Counter break will save me. And that artillery is perfectly placed right there. Okay. Get the medium tank down a bit. When I get counter break ready to go, she basically can't touch the tanks on the headquarters. Those will be completely invincible. We can also take out, yep, yeah, the five. Okay. This is fine. That's the fun thing about this mission. It's just balanced beautifully. Where, you know, it is quite manageable when you know this game. But it always feels uh, like you're on the verge of collapse, which is lovely. Screw it. Counter break. I will take it. So, okay, just go wibbly wibbly woo. And if we're lucky, we might get eyes on, uh, yeah, the rocket again. There we go. Visibility of uh, the rocket, which is good. We can actually start taking that out. Though, unfortunately, yeah, it's on a city they have taken. So it will start healing a bit, which is a little bit annoying. Especially as that's going to counterfire up me with bonus damage as she's about to prime tactics. So, okay, bit of a shame, but what can you do? I'm going to finish off, yeah, that there uh, tank. Purely because that way it cannot recharge. It won't come back later. As uh, for you, yeah, this is a good target. Medium tank needs to be weakened. Then we have got, okay... Priority target is probably, yeah, number five for right there. Get you down to kill if we can. Good. Okay. And then, obviously, big target, the Neo. At this point, yeah, damaged medium tanks can't do too much to me, which is a beautiful. Over on this side, we have got plenty of firepower, which is great. Finish off at this one before it tries to retreat. Beautiful. Okay, I'm going to start exposing more units. Because under counter break, what are you going to do? Basically, nothing you can do. So, uh, problem is, there's not much for these rockets to fire on, which is a bit of a shame. I would like her to come over here to hit these units I've deliberately exposed. Whether she will or not, I do not know. Okay, what have we got left here? We have got one unit right here. Finish off, yeah, the strength of four. Just get you off the field. And lashes, yeah, a little kind of... Uh, Giant pile of tanks is looking dicey. Do I want to fire on this? To be honest, no. I think not. So leave you there as bait. Not much they can do to you. Then just charge up the rockets. Make sure we're good. Okay. This turn, she's going to superpower. But under my superpower, she's still not going to be able to do much. So this is going to be an interesting, uh, yes, blend of uh, bits and pieces. Uh, Lash activates her ability. Beautiful. So yeah, Prime Tactics, vicious for offense and defense. Unquestionably, one-on-one, -on -one, Lash beats Sonya. All right, Sonya needs to depend on a fog of war and a situation like this to have any chance. But I think Lash is running out of steamer here. And she can't do much this turn for the simple reason that, yeah, counter breaks in effect. So, okay, she just found my rockets. That's bad, but honestly, the person that attacked it was not that bad at all. So, okay, PC's coming forward, uh, and a lot of these units are falling back to recharge. And also, I think she jumped. Obviously, she can't bloody see your rocket because it's in the forest. Marvelous. So, okay, just 
keep going. And honestly, I'm amazed we're doing that much with defense six. But still, I will flipping take it. Finish off, uh, yep, the tank right here. Okay, guys, seriously. I've got troops over here just deliberately trying to bait you. Please come and take the bait if you'd be so kind. In fact, you know what? I think it's time. At this point, there's not much going on down south. So begin migrating at these rockets towards the north. Just to provide a bit of extra firepower over on this side near the headquarters. But yeah, one important thing we need to do now is ideally, yeah, break their visibility of this rocket. Because unless they can see it, they can't fire on it. If I kill every adjacent unit, they've got to waste one unit going up to get visibility before they can actually attack it again. So, okay. Take out you, a little recon unit. That's fine. Maybe should have sent, uh, yeah, my actual uh, mech to do that. That might have been a bit of a waste. You're running low on ammo, by the way. Keep you supplied. Then take out, yeah, you. That's absolutely fine. She really couldn't do anything to me under counter break, which is marvellous. Kind of hard countered her uh, prime tactics, in fact. Then we have got, yeah, you. Take out this. That should be a kill, right? Marvellous. Even with defense four, that's good enough. Honestly, just start doing some chip damage to the APC. Get it going down just so we can kill it more easily down the line. And at this point, I think Lash is running out of steam. Okay, Lash, what have you got for me over on day seven? So, okay, she's just insulting me while the computer thinks for a moment. That's all fine. Yeah, she's trying to take territory. Units are falling back to save territory in a desperate attempt to stay alive. But I'd say her offense is officially stalled at this point. She's now got nothing, so okay. That means we're now in a safe position to start advancing a bit. Start laying down at the fire. Make sure she can't take any more cities so she can't charge up her troops because uh, she's got limited cities uh, that belong to her. She's got units just sitting here waiting to go into friendly territory because she can't get in there right now. So uh, step one, rockets. I want them dead. I do not want them recovering. No, 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 no. So, okay, we've also got a shot right here. Admittedly, visibility is getting a, a bit low because I gave up the mountain a moment ago. And yeah, I'm honestly pretty happy at this point to start deploying my own tank to downstarter mopping up. Yep, I'm sending in a tank for final mop-up duties right here. I think it might just be the final remnants of, uh, yeah, her infantry. I do not see anything else left alive. And if I'm right, as we just roll in and take out the last maker, this should be the end. It turns out, oh yep, curse is gone. Oh. We're done. And that answers that question. It turns out Sonia was the one who was right. Hmm. Well, and what you know, I lost. At least I still have a few pieces to play with. Pieces? I can't believe you said that. This isn't a game. You're not on some kind of playground. Yeah. And yeah, it is a game. A wonderfully fun game between you and me. I know you feel the same way. Come on, you can tell me. Don't be ridiculous. I, I, I'm nothing like you, Lash. Oh, I think your pauses give the game away there, Sonia. Please, it's like looking into a less stylish mirror. We're the same. I swear she didn't say less stylish mirror in the original. Lash has got sassier in the reboot. It's brilliant. You can't help but think about it, can you? The next move, that rush you get from sending units out onto the field. I know you do. Sonia's got nothing to say. We're not so different, Sonia. Someday you'll feel the joy of war. Oh wait, you feel it right now, don't you? Until next time, toodles! And there we go. We end the mission with existential dread. And unlike many villains who say, we're not so different, you and I, Lash is actually right. Sonia 100% has been fairly called out by Lash there. And with 100, 100, and 100, I get a perfect score and an S rank once again. Beautiful. So, that there was one mission from Advance Wars 1, and two missions from Advance Wars 2, and uh, as you can see, there's, um, there's a lot more to this game than that. And that doesn't include the challenge maps over in the War Room. And then there's Custom Mode if you want even cocking more maps. Oh, and don't worry if you thought that didn't look like that many maps, because there's plenty more to buy with the coins you get from the campaign too. Or, of course, the design room, so you can just make your own maps too and play them in a mode of your choosing. So basically, yes, there's a reason this is one of my favourite games of all time, which is bloody hell, there's a lot to get your teeth into here. Like, I have no way of tracking how many hours of my life I've put into Advance Wars 1 and 2, but, I mean, it's got to be well over a thousand over the years. So basically, that's Advance Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp. 
as magical now as it was 20 years ago. And uh, I desperately want this to be a success. Because if it is, we might get even more new Advance Wars, alright? The damage done by Days of Ruin might finally be healed, damn it. It would be... Ah, oh, that would be marvellous. Just, this is a wonderful wonderful game. One of my favourite games of all time, and I think it has aged like fine wine. This is our... Oh, it's beautiful. Okay, absolutely beautiful. Do not be surprised if at some point I'm just in the mood to do a stream of this too, because oh, it's just... it's just wonderful. It's just bloody wonderful. If you've got a Switch, give it a go. It's got one of the finest campaigns in all of gaming, to my mind. Brilliant maps, brilliant characters, brilliant writing, colourful, charming, just... It's wonderful. It's flipping wonderful. And if nothing else, I will be playing a lot of this in my own time. Don't you flipping worry. So, uh, as I say, may well see a bit more of this in the future. We shall flipping see. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been the wonderful Advance Wars. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Jebediah Kerman has not exploded. Oh, oh shit. Why did that happen? Five, four... Three. Oh, I forgot to turn the thrust on. Five, four. Is everything else? How is everything? Up to that point, that was going better than anyone expected.